Kim Kardashian is coming out with a skincare line. Is anyone surprised? I certainly am not. As a matter of fact, I am actually more surprised that it has taken her this long to come out with a skincare line. She has launched other endeavors in the beauty space. She had a makeup line, perfume. She launches a variety of different brands. Not all of them are a flop though. Her clothing line, for example, Skims, it's shapewear, I should say. That's actually quite popular and well received. So what do I think of the skincare line? Skin by Kim, S-K-K-N by Kim. And there's already been a lot of controversy about the name of her brand because there are two other companies that have a very, very similar name, which is trademarked. So there's a lot of backlash already about her choice of name. SKKN Plus, Skin or Skin Plus, which has been around since 2018 and filed for trademark in March of 2021. And then the other one is SKN by LH. So these brands are not too happy because they worked really hard for their company. And now all of a sudden Kim Kardashian is gonna swoop in with her skincare brand and overrun Google search engines and their brands are gonna get lost in, in the flood of online searches and things. So understandably they are upset. I don't know much beyond that. Anyways, what exactly is slated to arrive in these products? Is it just another celebrity skincare gimmick? It's, it's obviously gonna be hard to tell. Is this gonna be a flop or a success? She's supposed to be coming out with nine products and she claims that they have been heavily tested on a variety of human volunteers of a variety of skin types, skin tones, textures. She claims they're gonna be suitable for all maturity levels, fine for both men and women. The packaging, at least what I can make of it, looks very monotone, kind of sleek, svelte, not over the top. Interestingly, the products will be refillable and the refills are about 15% less than the actual products themselves, which is good because all nine products together are $630. And you might think like, who is gonna pay that much money? Somebody might, <laughs> I don't know. I think people will actually end up dabbling in at least a few of these products just to kind of see. I don't know if they're gonna stick though. I don't know if people are gonna stick with these. Kim doesn't really care that it's expensive. She wants it to be expensive. First of all, she probably knows that she can get away with charging this much. She knows that there are some people out there who will pay this much. The price point is not of a concern to her she doesn't care that people think it's too expensive. Um, so in her mind, she probably assumes that there are going to be some people out there who will buy it regardless. She makes statements that suggest she feels that she has put a lot of work into this. It's not just another celebrity skincare brand. I don't know. I'm suspicious. She says she's worked very closely with a lot of people in the industry. Many people will say, why should I buy skincare products from Kim Kardashian? She's not an esthetician. She's not a dermatologist. So just because someone's a dermatologist and has a skincare line, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is it is any better than anything else that you could get on the market. Just because someone's a celebrity, it doesn't necessarily mean that the products are a cash grab, although in my experience, more often than not, they kind of are. So I'll be interested to see what these products are that she comes out with. She says, I think the credibility of knowing that I got the best advice ever and the best formulations from some of the people that I just respect the most. That's kind of a nebulous rebuttal to the credibility question. Anyways, all right, what are the products? She's got a cleanser, a toner, an exfoliator, a hyaluronic acid serum, a vitamin C serum, a face cream, an eye cream, oil drops, and a night oil. I imagine the oil drops are probably gonna be something that you just add a few drops to your moisturizer to boost uh, you know, the emollient effect, I guess, and enhance the radiance that you achieve from the moisturizer. If she comes out with like a rosehip oil or a hoba seed oil for $90, you guys, if people fall for that and buy that, oh man, <laughs> just go, just go to the health food store and you can buy jojoba seed oil. It's not like, yeah, I predict that it's probably gonna be something like that. Maybe it'll be scented, fragranced, and you know, people think that it's more luxurious or something, I don't know. I wonder if she's gonna do a hydrating toner or a toner with some kind of skin brightening active ingredient in it. That'll be interesting to see. The exfoliator, I imagine, is gonna uh, contain glycolic and or lactic acid, which are alpha hydroxy acids. Marketing would have you believe that you constantly need to be exfoliating your skin. You really don't. I mean, truthfully, aside from 
uh, dr certain dry skin conditions or with age, you know, the skin turns over a little bit more slowly. That can lead to kind of buildup of dry skin. But simply consi being consistent with cleansing, moisturizing, and protecting your skin from the sun, it can help with moisture retention and barrier function. And ultimately that facilitates the natural turnover of your skin. The importance of exfoliating as part of a skincare routine is very much overstated. Now for people who have hyperpigmentation, incorporating an exfoliant a few times a week, uh, depending on how the product is formulated, can help in accelerating the rate of clearance of that hyperpigmentation. But to what extent everyone needs to use it? Yeah. And then the hyaluronic acid serum. This, uh, I mean, I don't know what, why you would plunk down in the ballpark of $90 for a hyaluronic acid serum. Hyaluronic acid, uh, it, it, I think it's one of the most misunderstood ingredients. As of late, a lot of people are you know, worried that it's gonna dry out their skin. But if a product is formulated properly, hyaluronic acid shouldn't lead to more water loss out of the skin. Uh, if you use it along with a moisturizer to seal in the hydration, it really shouldn't lead to more evaporative water loss. Hyaluronic acid really just kind of helps pull water into the top stratum corneum, and that can have a, wrink a temporary wrinkle smoothing effect. But you do not need to spend big box. She also has a vitamin C serum coming out. Of course, vitamin C is one of the most popular ingredients um, that people look at, look for in skincare. I've, I've said this before, it is not an essential. And the problem with vitamin C serums is they're tricky to formulate. According to her, she's worked with the experts and so she thinks that hers is going to be a good one. Comment below, do you think Kim's vitamin C serum is gonna have L-ascorbic acid or is it gonna have one of the stabilized vitamin C derivatives, which I've said before, have very little research to support their efficacy in terms of improving collagen synthesis? Let me know. If I were a betting person, I would be willing to bet she's gonna do one of the stabilized forms because ascorbic acid, not only is it tricky to formulate so that it actually gets into the skin, but it's tricky to keep it stable and it can oxidize <clears throat> and lead to discoloration. And consumers don't like that. It causes problems. So I would imagine she's gonna use one of the stabilized derivatives like magnesium ascorbyl phosphate maybe, or maybe she'll use sodium ascorbyl phosphate. You know, there is some evidence that that may be helpful for people who have oily skin or acne prone skin. We shall see. The face cream, she's gonna have a, a face cream, like a nighttime moisturizer. And she's also gonna have an eye cream. I've said this before, but if you're gonna have a skincare brand, you have to have an eye cream. It is a rule. If you don't have an eye cream, you're out. I mean, Paula of Paula's Choice, she held off on having an eye cream for a long time. And then finally she came out with one and people were pissed at her, but there was so much consumer demand. It's like, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna have a skincare brand or do you want to uphold some kind of a ethos? It's very difficult to stay competitive in a skincare market without at least an eye cream. The oil drops I already mentioned, I think it's gonna be the kind of thing that they tell you to just add a few drops to your moisturizer if you're during a bout of extra dry skin or maybe if you're experiencing some peeling with their exfoliant in the beginning, they'll probably tell you to boost the moisturizer with some expensive oil drops. And then a night oil. A lot of people like to incorporate a facial oil into their skincare routine. Oils, they smooth everything out. Um, they're emollients, but they don't really lock in hydration. So using an oil at, on its own isn't necessarily the best approach to moisturizing the skin. You want to use a moisturizing cream that has occlusives, humectants to help hydrate, but her line wants you to use both. So <laughs> there's that. I wonder what oil she will use for the facial oil. It'll probably be a mixture of different oils and she'll probably like heavily promote one of the oils, maybe something that is more unique or less well known. And then there'll be some basic oils in the oil, like a hoba seed oil, sunflower seed oil. These are not bad or anything, but I'm just trying to think in my mind, how is she gonna market a facial oil? And a mar I mean, these products that she's coming out with, vitamin C serum, eye cream, face cream, uh, cleanser, the market for these products is saturated. So how is she going to set hers apart? Is it just gonna be this packaging and the refills and her face? I don't think that's going to, I don't think that's gonna keep this brand alive. She makes it seem like they've really worked on the texture and the consistency of these. So it's gotta be something like, how, am I, how can a face cream be so strikingly different that the face cream you're currently using, you're gonna abandon in favor of hers? I mean, what's it gonna take for you to drop whatever facial moisturizer you are using and go to hers.
it seems like seems like the consistency here better be like money because <laughs> that's what you're paying a lot of money you know in her mind this is not an exorbitant price point which i think is a bit out of touch with the realities of our life these days with inflation everybody's really strapped for cash to her 630 dollars for nine products or 90 dollars for a serum is nothing because have you guys looked back ever at what types of skincare products she uses they are not cheap she uses some of the most expensive products on the market her skincare routine and the products that she uses in total in her bathroom allegedly she has about forty five hundred dollars worth of products she uses this $525 um, product from Guerlain, their longevity concentrate, which is just a bunch of fragrance and humectants. Uh, she also uses the Creme de la Mer, which is really popular scented moisturizer I've reviewed for you guys in the past. It's, it's $315. She uses Barbara Sturm's Hyaluronic Acid, which goes for $300, man. If you are spending $300 on sodium hyaluronate, we need to talk. We need to talk. If you are spending $300 on a dropper bottle of sodium hyaluronate, what are you doing with your money? What are you doing with your money? I know it's your money and you could spend it how you want, but come on, come on. You could grow an empire with all that hyaluronic acid. So in her mind, she's giving you guys a deal on her products, only charging you $630. Um, and they're refillable, so you can save on the refills by not having to buy the full package. I wonder if they're going to have fragrance. If this were three or four years ago, I would have predicted 100% they're going to have fragrance. But there is a larger consumer demand these days for fragrance-free products. That being said, many people who like to drop coin on expensive skincare brands, like that's their form of self-care or whatever, they really like the fragrance. And I think that's who she is likely going to capture. People who are already using La Mer, people who are already using that Augustinus Bader cream, people who are already using the truth serums and all of those super expensive luxury skincare brands, which at the end of the day are not actually going to change anything about your skin in any appreciable way, any differently than any basic moisturizer that you could probably buy, you know, at the dollar store. But people really like their skincare. They like the textures, the consistencies, the scents, you name it, that's what people actually are shopping for is the experience. They like the packaging. They like the prestige of having the look of it on their bathroom counter. Nine products seems like kind of a lot to me. Y'all know I'm more in the two to three plus one category of a skincare routine, keeping it simple. But, uh, you know, she is marketing it in a way that like this is what you need. You need to focus this kind of energy into your skincare routine in order to look like me, which is a bit, you know, manipulative because let's face it, she has a lot of money and she gets a lot of custom attention, different treatments. She's the one who popularized the vampire facial and all of that. And let's be honest, the skincare line is lacking in one of the most important pieces of any skincare routine, and that is sun protection. Now, I know that creating a sunscreen is not easy, and it's expensive. There are a lot of legislative hurdles, testing that you have to go through. It's actually really expensive to come out with a sunscreen. So I don't really always fault new brands for not having a sunscreen. But when you're talking about somebody with her financial backing, I do find it a little bit suspicious that she doesn't have a sunscreen. Uh, maybe she'll come out with one later on if the line continues to be fruitful, which brings me to my next point. Is this just a quick cash grab or is it something like her, or like her shapewear line that may, may take off and be something that people actually buy and take seriously? I'm going to predict that it's going to fizzle out and not because her brand necessarily will be bad or the products will be bad or, or whatever. I just think that the consumer interest is not quite there. And it's nothing to do with her, actually. It's really just that I think that consumers, it's not gonna hold consumer attention long enough to be something that is sustained. I think the launch, she'll make decent money and for her, you know, which is billions of dollars probably. But thereafter, are people actually gonna be purchasing the refills? I doubt it. I, I doubt that people, especially people who are in the luxury skincare, that's their thing, they like luxurious skincare. I doubt they're gonna break up with their La Mer creams to start using her product. 
I, I, I'm very doubtful that that's going to be the case. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, uh, but I'm doubtful that that will be the case because La Mer has been around for a long time and has held people's interest for a long, long, long time. I doubt they're suddenly gonna just abandon that and go to her product. The brand is backed by the beauty conglomerate Cody, so I'm not exactly sure you know, to what extent the R&D is gonna be there for some kind of innovative peptide serum or something like that one might expect from her, especially since she seems keen on using that $500, $525 Guerlain product, which has peptides in it. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see how that unfolds but like i said i really don't think that this is going to hold consumers attention enough not only do i doubt they're going to break up with their current luxury skincare products i doubt new people are suddenly going to you know bail on their skincare routine and start shelling out this premium price point i guess the one thing that could keep people coming back to her is if these products like she claims really do have a more cosmetically pleasing texture, something that people enjoy applying to the skin. That actually is key because you can have a product that is actually fantastic, the ingredient is wonderful, but if the formulation is not comfortable or pleasing to the consumer, they're not gonna buy it. People are going to be put off by different textures. Some people just like trying out new skincare products all the time you know they're always trying out new stuff so i'm sure people will buy this i have i have no doubt that people will buy this mostly out of intrigue and some people may actually enjoy the products but i'm 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 doubtful that they're going to keep coming back and repurchasing and i can say all that honestly confidently without having any knowledge of what the actual ingredients are. Aside from the types of products, I don't need to know the ingredients. I don't even need to use the products myself. I will still have the same prediction that this is how this is going to go. In my opinion, this maybe would have been more successful if she had tried it in lieu of the makeup or the perfume, because I think her makeup brand came out maybe when people were less interested in makeup around the lockdown time. That would have been the time to get into skincare. Now, I think people are less interested in skincare than they were, say, in 2020, and I think it's gonna be harder for this to take off in popularity. Her whole brand, though, is basically selling her appearance, um, and she kind of goes to great lengths with her appearance, doing all sorts of procedures and treatments, and you know she always kind of is pushing the boundaries. So we shall see how this goes. But anyways, those are my thoughts. Let me know in the comments what your predictions are for this brand. What type of vitamin C serum do you think she'll come out with? Do you think this will last or will it just be a quick cash grab and then we'll never hear anything about it again? If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.